Welcome back to another Microsoft Access tutorial. Today we're going to talk a bit about form controls and the properties that are associated with those forms. So let's open the Access database that I have set aside to do this. And what I want to first do is show you the, the table that is underlying. I'm going to go ahead and put this in design view because it has a variety of different types of data that are going to be underlying the controls. Those underlying data forms tend to dictate the kind of control that you have. Of course, a lot of them fit under text boxes, but there's also the fact that an auto number, when it's on a form, you can't update it. The customer, a lot of times, will need to be aware that when they're using the form, they can't update. For example, in this case, it'll be the customer ID that you'll see on the form. We have a date, time, a couple date times in here, which are good. And we'll, we see that there's a format difference here. It's going to be a regular text control, but the data will appear as a currency. We also have numbers. So just like the currency, it'll be a different data format underneath, but it'll be a big basic text box. Then we have a long notes, long text field. And there are three types of text fields, short, long, and memo. Now the long text field, notice it doesn't have values down here that tell how much, how, what the length is. Up here under short text, you have the different field sizes, but for long text, you just don't, okay? And then you have this one here that is going to be a, a yes, no type checks box or a true false or the, that kind of an on off Boolean type of text box where the underlying value is either gonna be zero or negative one. And then this particular one, because we've chosen yes, no, in this case, the default value here, which can be selected here, is going to be of a yes, no variety. But we could put true, false. We could put on, off, that type of, of thing. So the format up here lets you select true, false, or on, off, or yes, no, that type of thing. Three different uh, types of values that you can display even though the underlying data is represented with a negative one and a zero. So we'll leave that as a yes, no. And let's go take a look at how that's represented on the form and see how we would format those, each of those for the customers, for our customers that are gonna use uh, the form in particular. So we're gonna come down here to form customers and I wanna put this in design view. And in putting this in design view, we see the basic design view grid here that shows the layout of the items. You'll notice down, down here that this is a tabbed control. So uh, with a tabbed control, of course, it has three different sets of values, okay, that can be set. And so first I wanna to touch on is this interesting one up here. Notice that it says unbound, which means we don't have it attached to data underneath the system. Not like customer ID down here, for example. This one is actually a selector for the customer ID. And if we click on it here, what we'll notice is under the data over here, there's a query, a select query being chosen here. If we wanna look at it, we can click the ellipse and see how it's constructed we see that it, there's three different fields here and we want it sorted over here, even though these aren't these two columns aren't going to actually appear in the query. We wanted to sort by them, so we put them out of here and made them not visible. And then if we look here, we see that this is just a concatenation of the last name, comma space, first name that is used as the sort at, at the end. Okay, now remember queries sort from left to right. So if we wanna sort, last name and then first name we put last name to the left and first name to the right and so that is our basic query there it's going to ask me to save it no it didn't just by moving that it didn't ask me to save it so that's good so this one is also unique in that it is a list box you see the down arrow here and that down arrow tells you that it's a combo box okay there are two list box types combo box and list box and the list box allows you to have a list that when you click the down arrow shows you a scroll bar on the right hand side but allows you in the list box to choose multiple values if you want and then when you choose those multiple values then you can go on to the next field a drop down type of box 
lets you choose one value and in this case, in this form, it's used as a selector so that you can select the appropriate customer ID down here. And we'll get, we can get back into the coding and so forth that when this changes, I believe it's an on change. Yes, after update event procedure, it, it then filters this to the particular customer. And we will talk about those event procedures in a later video when we talk about putting code uh, underneath it and creating those event procedures. And another part of this that's really important is over here in format, what you see is that there's three columns. Then this is unique to a list box or text box, okay? And the column widths are listed here. So even though we have the customer ID in this particular query, we're not going to actually show the customer ID to the customer. We're going to let the customer ID be chosen by the name and the company that the person is affiliated with, you know, by last name and first name, and then by company name. And we're going to then have column heads to tell them that it's the name of the person and the company. We're going to show 16 rows here. And then we're going to have a total list width of four inches, which is just the addition of the two plus the two up here for each of the columns. Now, all the, these things here are unique to a combo or list box, and you need to set those when you're creating a combo box. Now, if we come down here to our tab to form down here, a couple of the other things that we're seeing here is, of course, we see these text boxes. Here we see the customer ID box here, and you'll notice when we put this in regular view that the customer cannot change this particular one, no matter how many times I hit the keyboard, uh, it's not going to allow me to change because it's an auto number field underneath. Now, if we use the combo box here, here we choose by last name, first name, and maybe it's Carl's Collectibles, and then they go to the Carl's Collectibles data set down here. And so that's done with a little bit of VBA code underneath it. It's pretty simple to do. Okay, so I'm going to put this back in design view. So we see those text boxes. Now over here, we have that yes, no field that we talked about. Up here, if you look in your design ribbon, it's just this checkbox control here that you've pulled on the screen. And then when you got it down here for data, you've chosen the active field out of the list of fields that are over here to, to uh, put the da that data underneath here. A yes, no field, this could be a text box over here. It could be a checkbox over here. Generally, you leave it as a checkbox because it's just got two values left, yes, no, and it's easier for the customers to, for your customers to use it if it's just a checkbox. Okay, so now we can come here and we see that in the form footer, you are able to then have a couple buttons. Now, buttons are done with this control up here called a button. You click on that and then you click on click on the area down here and you use the, the go through the wizard and tell it what kind of button you want and what you want the button to do. That's the easy way to set it up. If you go look at the controls over here, notice there's no data under it, but over here on format, you can choose it to have a caption. And in this case, new is the caption. You see that listed on there. The ampersand before it underlines that N there so that you can you, so the customer can use the keyboard as a as a control there. So in using that control with the keyboard, they can just type control N and uh, go forward there. Here you have the color of it and whether it's flat or raised and various different items to control. But the most important part of a button is you want it to do, to do something. Well, when you want something to do something, it's an event. So the event shows here, so I'll highlight that. It's an event procedure. And if we click the ellipse over here, we can see that the event procedure it's pointing to is this down here. And so it's going to do a command and it's going to do the AC command records go to new, command records go to new. So it's gonna just use a predefined function command that says go to new record. And so if I were to click this button, instead of uh, data being here, the data would be able to show um, a blank record so that somebody could enter a, a new customer, okay? 
Uh, there's also the same thing with delete over here. If we look at this event procedure, we'd see that there's a bunch of code here that you know starts with an if then statement and says if this message box that you've put up here to extract whether they want to actually delete the record or not is yes, then it's going to go ahead and delete the record. If not, it just goes right through this because it says VB no. And if it's VB no, it's just going to end the if statement and end the subroutine and cancel, basically. It's probably a cancel button that they've put on it. If I close this then, what we then look at is another tab over here. So I'm on the contact information. Well, what I want to do is I want to find where we have that date. Oh, here. This is a new unique one. We have one that is set up as a URL here. So that is pretty neat. Let's look at the format. Display as a hyperlink. If it's a hyperlink, you display it as a hyperlink. Okay. So you can display it as a hyperlink if it recognizes it as it, that it is, or display it always as a hyperlink, no matter what it is. Okay. And then we can go here to the next. Oh, by the way, we've got a got uh, a text box here, but um, here we have a an input mask here, and the input mask allows us to control what it looks like. So the nines mean if they put in that number, you can show it as that. And then these would be mandatory. Let's move on to this last tab, which I think has a, a date on it, sales date. Okay. It has a drop down list here as well, but look at the sales date there. Okay. And so we have the last sales date and because it's a date function, if we go to the design view, what we show here is it has this little icon up, to, up off to the side here and it, we've created a date control here. And this date control then allows us to choose a particular date from a calendar type of control, which makes it a little easier to choose a date. Or the user could just type the date in and they'd, they'd be just fine in doing that as well. Okay, so let's close that. So one last thing before I quit here. If you want the form footer and the form header, it's real simple to do. If you only have the detail here, which is really where you start, if you right click on the top here, you can choose a page header footer or a form header footer. And what's what's happened here is they've chosen to, I don't want to delete the controls, they've chosen to have a form header and footer. And if you decide you want, want one but not the other, and it includes both at the same time, you can just close this one up, you know, like that. Um, it won't let me close it up because it still has controls in there. The challenge here is that if you right click this and tell it to get rid of this, it'll warn you that it's going to delete all those controls too. So if you don't want those controls to go bye bye, what you really need to do is to uh, make sure that those controls are pulled into the detail area of the form so that you can retain those. So we'll click no on that case now. So what we've done here with this video is we've gone over the basic controls and the basic types of data that can be under those controls. Remember from our last video to this video, those property sheets are your friends. They're, they're the things that help you to conform and configure all of the information on the screen. We don't haven't gone over the colors that we could choose or change, but those are easy to find. Uh, they're over in the property sheet and you can, you can tell here that all the different color variations that you can use. And there's quite a, quite a few of the different ones. And that requires a bit of playing around with them to get to familiar with each of the, the ways that you can change those colors. But that's pretty much all that we haven't covered at this point. The de devil's in the details, of course. So have a good manual next close by you. And uh, hope to see you in the next video. Thanks. I want to thank you so much for viewing this video. We have great content on the site and I'm putting more content out every single day. There's a link to one of them on the side of the screen over here. Also, please help me grow the channel by subscribing. So hit that subscribe button a little bit lower on the other side of the screen and hope to see you again. Thanks.